Hello friends, <laughs> welcome to the talk GC tuning and troubleshooting crash course. I am actually surprised by the turnout given it is the last session, <laughs> it, we might want to leave early. <laughs> okay. So, but thank you very much uh, for attending the session. I hope I do not disappoint you. Okay. Uh, and I am Ram Lakshmanan, I am the founder <laughs> and the architect of the DevOps products which is GCEC, FastThread and EPRO. Okay. So, with that uh, we can get started. But before we get started, uh, how many of you attended my today morning talk? Is a oh, wow, fairly <laughs> a good turnout. <laughs> do it anyway, I repeat it. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll do it. See, uh, I recently read an article that in your hand there is a lot of acupuncture pressure points. <laughs> and when you clap, the, for the person who is clapping, he is going to feel very relaxed. He is going to get a better, better, better blood circulation and it is really good for his heart. So, all throughout the session, feel free to clap whenever you want it to be. <laughs> we can start now. Thank you. I think uh, other uh, people might think this uh, session is over. <laughs> they have thought we should attend this one. <laughs> okay. Okay, <clears throat> so what is garbage? Anyone wants to take a shot? Yes. It's what's left over once you've done all the allocation of the application, and it's been released and it's ready, ready for testing. It's still holding storage, but it's still uh, it's, uh, the application is done. Okay, very good. Good answer. Very good. Anyone else wants to say any other answer? What is garbage? Yes, sir. The things we don't need anymore. Yes, very good. Anyone else wants to say any other definition? What is garbage? Oh, this is a very interesting definition I'm hearing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> very true. <laughs> okay. See, I have my own definition of what this, what is garbage, but I'm going to be telling it at the end of my slide, end of my talk. Okay. So, a small quiz. As of Java 11 plus, how many garbage collectors are there? 11 plus. 11 plus. <laughs> that, that is very true. Actually, there is uh, 12 <laughs> garbage collectors. <laughs> but, see, this is just an odd spot JVM and then this uh, scalable high performant open j9 jvm but if i'm going to take azul they are their own flavors of garbage collectors android android devices which runs on jvm modified version of jvm they have their own garbage collectors so there are so many versions there are so many different garbage collection algorithms okay each and every algorithm behaves differently so so now we have to learn like a 12 plus algorithms do you know how many GC or memory related J, JVM arguments you can pass to your JVM? Depends on the, the garbage collector. Depends on the garbage collector, that's true. But I'm asking, say, overall, how many JVM arguments you can pass? 40? Or what did you say? 50? Okay, 50 is one answer. 42, okay. <laughs> the answer is <laughs> you can pass 600 plus arguments. So, virtually, when you <laughs> try to <laughs> understand this garbage collection and all these arguments, it's going to be a little bit overwhelming, right? And, but I want to say, and it's not fair like for an engineer to understand all these different garbage collection algorithms and what are the different arguments that you can pass. It's really overwhelming. It's beyond comprehension. It's very, very difficult. But it's not that you are not alone. Most of us, not most of us, like I've seen, I've spoken to a lot of GC gurus, a lot of Oracle 
JVM Expo, oh, I'm on a recording, so I can't blame anyone. <laughs> uh, but still, I can do a little bit. <laughs> Who give talks, great talks on garbage collection, everything. And off the stage, if you ask them some questions, oh, I don't know, what is that? <laughs> so that is the kind of the response. So it's very difficult for uh, anyone to understand completely what's going on with this ecosystem. But don't worry. In this session, I'm going to be teaching you some few simple techniques, few simple fu fundamentals. With these fundamentals, let the garbage collection algorithms go from 12 to 20 to 24. You don't worry. Let the, let the JVM-related arguments go from 600 to 1,000 or even beyond that. We don't have to worry. I'm going to teach you some fundamentals. With these fundamentals, you can tune, you can tune and you can troubleshoot GC and memory-related problems. Okay. So if you want to tune garbage collection algorithms, you want to understand what are the key performance indicators. What are the parameters against which I'm going to be do the uh, tuning? See, there is this famous saying, you cannot optimize something which you cannot measure. So when you're doing the tuning, you need to understand what are all the parameters that I want to be tuning against, OK? So my friends, there's only three parameters. There's only three key performance indicators that you want to be looking at when you're tuning for GC, OK? The first one is latency. What is latency? Latency is basically a pause time. When a garbage collection runs, it pauses your JVM. It has to pause the JVM so that it can mark all the objects which are not active, and then it can sweep them out. So the people have been making a lot of optimization. So the amount of pause time is coming down, 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 down over a period of time. But still, the, JV, the GC, when you run the GC runs, it has to pause. So what is the pause time? So that is the first, uh, the KPI, the first key performance indicator that you want to be looking when you are tuning. You don't want to be just, we don't want to be just looking at the average pause time, because average is always uh, deceiving, right? Why average is deceiving? It's for obvious reasons. But just to give a practical example, let's say we are calculating the average net worth of every one of us in this room. We all are engineers. I do. Let's say for some reason, if Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates comes to this uh, session and he attends the garbage collection algorithm session, <laughs> then the average net worth of all of us is going to go very high if you do the computation. Because just with one guy, is going to take away this entire thing. So you don't want to be always believing in average. You want to be looking at the distribution. Like within the 0 to 200 milliseconds, how many GCs, how many GC events completed? Like here, as in this example, 99.23 percentage of events is completed. Within 200 to 400 milliseconds, 0.13 percentage is completed. And also, you want to be looking at the maximum pause time. What is my maximum pause time? Apparently, in this case, it is 990 milliseconds. And guys, there is one misnomer that there is a minor GC and then a major GC. It's being told that minor GC, they don't pause the JVM. That's not true. Even in minor GCs, also the JVM is being paused. But the amount of time it is being paused is only less. Just, just information for you to keep in the back of mind. So here it is 990 milliseconds. How many, uh, OK. I have seen pause times, 25 minutes. Really 25 minutes. I can go down, we can go to that uh, coffee shop, get a coffee and come back. Still, it could be running. But that's on a very, very large, like a one terabyte machine. Or it's, There are cases like that, but just letting you know. OK. The second, the KPI, the second key performance indicator is the throughput. What is throughput? See, throughput is the amount of time your application spends in do processing the customer transaction versus amount of time it spends in doing garbage collection. So in this case, when you say 99.994 percentage is my throughput, it means this application has spent 
99.994 percentage in processing the customer transaction remaining only 0.006 percentage is what spent in doing the garbage collection see garbage collection is a necessary evil you have to run to reclaim the memory so once it's reclaimed you can service a new incoming request but garbage collection by itself will not benefit your customer directly so this is something you want to measure the throughput 99.994 percentage see some people might have question what is the difference between latency and throughput this sounds like more or less same right does anyone have a question you can feel raise hand no okay then everyone is okay people quite often mention suspension in which indicator does that relate to is it like 100% minus the throughput <coughs> Or is there no solid answer for that? Is that just someone's own definition? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll take this conversation offline. Yeah, okay. okay, I'm not sure. Okay. So, see, sometimes I can have my latency to be like a one millisecond. Like one, milli one GC event could just take one millisecond. That is my average latency. But, say suppose if, uh, if my GC is running for every 10 milliseconds, for every 10 milliseconds it is pausing one second, that means my throughput is going to be very bad, right? So you want to take, you want to strike a balance. And then the third KPI is, what is the footprint? That is, what is the size of my memory? If you have a smaller the memory, there is a good, the, without, you can say that most likely your pause time will be much better. And also, based on which GC algorithm you choose, the CPU will also vary, the CPU consumption will vary. See, in your application, I can fairly bet, major, I would say, significant amount of time is spent in doing garbage collection. Because your application is creating millions and millions of objects at runtime. When a new request comes, it is creating thousands and thousands of objects. So the garbage collector has to constantly run in the background to keep on marking, is this object active, is this object active, what are the references to it, and then it has to sweep them out. So it's a very CPU intensive operation. So based on which algorithm you choose and which settings you choose, the CPU will have an impact. So when it comes to tuning, so these are the three KPIs that you want to be looking at in tuning. So now we understood what are the KPIs are. Now let's see how I can get these KPIs from how, how I can source these KPIs, okay? You can source these KPIs from your garbage collection logs, from a GC log file. And I w so until if you're running on a JVM until Java 8, these are the arguments that you want to be passing to your JVM. And if it's going to be from Java 9, this is the argument you want to pass. So you give the file path, when you give the file path, so this is the file path where the GC log will be returned into. So the GC log contains a very rich set of information, like when a GC event ran, how long it took, how much memory it reclaimed, all this information are going to be there. With this information, I can get my KPIs, what are my KPIs are. And my recommendation is always keep your GC log turned on in all your production instances, because it's not going to add much overhead, if at all, if you can measure that. It's going to be very, very negligible. By having your GC lock turned on always, it's going to be facilitating you in troubleshooting a lot of problems, which we are going to be talking in soon. Okay. So, any questions so far? No. If you don't ask, then I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> Does, say, we configure XMX. Right? Let's say we say it as a 2 GB. We, I configure my XMX max memory size to be 2 GB. Will my overall Java process memory utilization, is, can it go beyond 2 GB? Will it go beyond 2 GB? How many of you say yes? Okay. Fairly majority of you. How many of you say no? Okay. One, one part. Okay. See, the answer is it will go beyond whatever you set it as XMX limit. Say if you set it as 2 or 2 GB, it's going to go beyond 2 GB. But here is the thing, there is, no, there is very hard to set a ceiling limit for it. It, it might be a little bit shocking, surprising. 
I can't set a ceiling limit. You can, but there is no direct argument. Like it will go, it can go as much as it can. So here is here is why it is. See, when an object is created, it's going to be created in this n generation. And say if the object has survived for a long period, that is, it has been there for a long period, then it's promoted from the n generation to the old generation. The reason why they are doing this is, see, this has been in, in the in the, in the modern in the modern implementation, modern GCs, there is only single generation. But I'm talking about from G1 or CMS. In, we do have this young and old generation. So why they have done that is, statistically, 80 percentage of your objects are short-lived objects. Your request comes, you create uh, thousands of objects. Once the request goes away, these objects are eligible for garbage collection. So by quarantining, by giving a small region for young generation. When my, there is a concept called as a minor GC. A minor GC it runs only on a young generation. So minor GC is triggered very frequently so that it can clean up all the short-lived objects very quickly. So that it doesn't have to scan the entire region, entire the young generation and the old generation, it doesn't have to do. So that is the optimization they have done. So minor GCs, they run very frequently and they run only on young generation. Because there is a limited set of objects to be scanned in n generation, the GC pass time is going to be better. So that's why they add, they add this division, n generation. And if it has surveyed for a long period, then it goes to the old generation. And then we have this meta space. So meta space is the space where all your metadata information about your class definitions, your methods, meta, those are all be going in. This you can set this value called as a x, uh, max meta space. You can set this, and then you can set a limit to it. XMX means you are setting the limit for n generation and the old generation together. But then, there is, a, there is no name for it, so I'm calling this others. See your threads, your application threads, you create application threads, right? So those threads, they are created in, in this others region. You're gonna be outside. And there is no limit like I can create as many threads as I want. So it, it, it's, it's going to keep growing. And then similarly, the, uh, for the garbage collection, it needs some memory. And then if you're going to open up the connections for your backend systems or the connections for, uh, that you're going to get, so those are all going in the, into this others region. So that's why there is no solid limit that I can set. My Java process cannot be going beyond this limit. There's no one single variable for me. Making sense? OK. So now, let, let, a quick recap. So these are the KPIs, three KPIs. We can get it from the log file, from the GC log file. So now, let me walk you through a sample GC log file. So when you turn it on, this is a very vanilla format of a GC log file. I'll quickly show, you, show this to you, and then I'll talk about the tooling also. See, this shows the timestamp at which the GC log, this GC event ran. So this GC event ran on 2016 August 3rd in the morning 1 a.m. This it shows a timestamp in which the GC event ran. Okay. And coming down, here it shows. Do you see this 1.606? This means the number of seconds since the JVM started, this event was triggered. After one second, this JVM was started, this GC event got triggered. And now you are going to see, see this is a GC. When it just says GC, that means a minor GC. It is running only on the young generation. But if you see the next line, it says full GC. It means, full GC means it's going to run on the young generation, old generation, as well as in meta space. So that's the difference. Okay. And now, here it shows the size of the young generation. The size of the young generation was 545 MB before the GC event ran. Once the GC event ran, it dropped from 545 MB to 18 megabyte. Okay, the, the garbage collection has cleared so much objects from memory. It has, it has, it has removed. And the overall the size of your end generation is 2 GB. 
the allocated size of your young generation is 2 GB. So, you allocated 2 GB and then before the GC event ran it was like a 545 megabyte. After the, uh, the, the minor GC ran it became 18 megabyte. Any questions on this? Yes, sir. So, that is a good question. There are several things which can trigger a GC, which we will talk about, which we will talk about. Maybe the generation is full, that is could be one reason. Then there is ergonomic settings are coming into play. So, there is multiple reasons which can trigger, but we will talk about it. Okay. So, now uh, coming along, this shows my overall EAP size. What I saw, what I am seeing here is just the young generation size what here I am seeing is the overall heap size. The overall heap size was 545 megabyte before the GC. After the GC it became 18 megabyte and the overall allocated size XMX in this case was 8 GB for this process. Okay, Making sense? And here this shows the time. There is a user time, sys time and real time. I will talk about the details of them shortly. But for all practical purpose, we can just focus on real time. Real time is basically a wall clock time, my watch time. It shows this took 0 0.02 seconds to complete. This GC event took 0 0.02 seconds to complete. See, this is the latency. Okay. So now I'm moving on to my next line. So here I can see this is a full GC event. This is a full GC event. And I can see this is very interesting. So look at this. The young generation size was 18 megabyte before the GC event. After the GC event, what has happened? Zero. So that means everything has been cleared from young generation. The young generation is zero. There is no objects now in young generation. So that is what this is telling me. And now, now see here this is interesting. Since this is a full GC, it is printing its full GC runs on young generation, old generation, as well as in meta space. And now you can see this old generation size. Before the event, it was 24 kilobyte. But after the event, it became 17 megabyte. See, isn't it this is counterintuitive? Because the garbage collection isn't it about removing the objects, evicting the unused object from memory. Isn't that now we are adding objects? How, how it's possible? Yeah, that's correct. So this is the objects have been moved. The technical term what they use is a promoted. They have been promoted from the young generation to the old generation. It's been moved. So that's why we see the size of the yeah. Yeah, that's true. Correct. Yes, I agree. Yes, yes. It's about clearing and compacting and making the space available. Yes. Yeah. So now you can see this is happening. And here I can see the meta space where the metadata information is there. There is not much change. It was like a same, like a 2078 uh, one kilobyte, and it remained the same. There is no difference in the metadata in the meta space. And the time it took here it's it's slightly more 0 0.04 seconds because now it is doing on, on all the regions, right? So this is how you will read the garbage collection log. Well, it's just two events, but yeah, there's going to be multiple events. There's going to be thousands of events. So how we can read it manually? It is impossible. That's where we want to take an help from the tooling. There are some tools available which we'll talk. The interesting uh, uh, point is what I showed you is just a vanilla format, but your GC log also changes by who is your vendor, Oracle, HP, IBM, Azure, and what version of Java you are using, and what algorithm you are using, and what arguments you are passing. Based on all these things, you are going to end up with different, different GC log formats. 
it makes the problem even a little bit more complicated. So this is how a G1 GC log looks. This is how a CMS GC log looks. This is how an IBM GC log looks. This is how an another flavor of IBM GC format log looks. You can see th they are printing in XML format. Same info, more or less same information, but presented in a different different format. If you guys are doing Android GC analysis, this is how the Android Dalvik VM GC log looks. Android Art GC log format. This is how it's going to look. So, but now the good news is you don't have to understand and analyze all these different formats to make a sense of what's going on. So, here with I'm sharing you some of the free garbage collection log analysis tools. You can use the tool whichever is of uh, preference to you. Okay. So now what I will do, let me upload a, a sample GC log file to one of the tool, the GCEC, and then let's see what's going on. See, this is the tool. So now we have turned on the garbage collection log. We have the garbage collection log file. Now I'm going to be uploading it here. Okay, so this tool as a, huh? Oh, oh. If this is a challenge, our friend is not here. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. So, okay, let me then do it again. So, this is the the tool. The tool I'm going to be uploading the GC log file which has been collected. Okay. So, now I'm seeing this as the report coming up, the GC log analysis report. The tool gives you some uh, initial recommendations. It, uh, if it detects some problem, it's going to give those problem, and it's also give, giving you the high level recommendations for your tool uh, on how to solve it. Okay, see here, it shows you the KPI section. It has passed the log, and then it's giving you what is my throughput, what is my latency, and what are my pos distribution, the, K the KPIs against which you need to be tuning. And here it, it gives you a lot of information about how my heap looks, what is my pos durations are looking like. It gives you vari various information, just for, a, for your information. And what are all the causes which is uh, triggering the GC, like our friend was asking, what are all the reasons why the GCs are getting triggered? So here you, give us, you see the summary. So because of allocation failure, the promotion failure, and these are the reasons why GCs have been triggered. Okay, so now, no worry. Now let me go back. Okay, see now we saw what are all the KPIs and how to source those KPIs. So now here, I'm going to be sharing with you some GC tuning tips and tricks. Okay. My first suggestion or my first tip is to start from the scratch. See, today if you look in your JVM, if, you, if your application has Apparently, 
they had all these arguments configured in the JVM. Our friend, what he did, he deleted all the arguments. He, de he removed everything. Em everything. After removing, he didn't do anything. <laughs> After removing, <laughs> it went from 92 percentage to 99 percentage. Sometimes we have to prevent ourselves from the doctor. You might prescribe wrong medicine. <laughs> <Just think. laughs> so, and look at this. The past time, it, it, it has improved uh, dramatically. It has gone down to 3 seconds from 20 seconds. See, because what it was doing was, these properties were triggering GCs unnecessarily than what it was required. then what you need, it was getting triggering very frequently. And getting rid of it, very vanilla setting, nothing. He's seeing this benefit. Okay? The second thing, what you want to do, when it comes to, yeah. Yes, th yes, that could be possible also. See, the thing is, the KPI is going to give me the answer. I instrument the KPI, I run the test, I see what is it. Whether, okay, I was here, whether I'm, am I going down, or am I going up. That is the answer. Okay? So, the second tip what I would like to share with the team is, st study the GC causes. What are all the reasons why your GCs is getting triggered? So, th see, this information is reported to you in, in the in the report, in the GCEC report, or any tool that you use, it's going to give you, okay, so these are all the reasons why my GCs are triggered. If you move over the cursor, there is this red question mark. If you move over your cursor there, it's going to give you uh, what does ergonomics means, what does G1 evacuation pause means. It's going to give you a detailed description of what, what, what is that event. Okay. See, apparently, in this case, the system.gc was being triggered. So, system.gc, right? When you say that a GC is going to be triggered, when your application is an API exposed to you, from your application when you call system.gc, they always say in the literature, they say that uh, you are requesting the JVM to trigger GC. But I have seen always when you call system.gc, a full GC event to be triggered. Full GC event is going to be triggered. See, your JVM has intelligence already to figure out when to run the GC. And now, if within your application, now you are saying system.gc, you are now throwing away all that computation, and then you are, you are striking this uh, system call, the GC call in, the, in between. So, my recommendation is try to avoid system.gc call as much as possible, unless there is a very, very valid reason. I have seen there are one or two cases which might be a valid reason, but most of the times, it is unnecessary. And also, the, the, the interesting part is, the system.gc may not be always called from your application. It can be called from the libraries that you are running. So, you might have imported some external third-party libraries. Then, uh, some application servers, they call system.gc. And when you use RMI, then they call GC, system.gc. Explicitly, they call. It's not just with, in my code. The libraries that I'm using, they can also trigger. So, for in that circumstance, yeah. You can't disable it, can you? If there is a reason why you wouldn't. What? You can't disable it through the command line, right? Disable explicit GC. We can. Yeah. I think it's a command line argument. Yeah. You can yes. So it yes. So, here there is a. Is there a valid use case for it? To disable the. Ex well, is there any time you would actually want explicit GC? See, uh, I have a reason why. It, th there is one reason, but it is also debatable also. I have seen this practice in one, one uh, our friend's question is, is there is even a, ever a valid reason to have that system.gc? Why do we even have that? Is, is there any valid reason to have the system.gc? The answer is, it, 
I have not seen much case, but I have seen one case where the, the, an enterprise have put this in use. Their system dot GC, it takes a, their GC call, the garbage collection takes a very long time to garbage collect, like 50 seconds, 60 seconds, or uh, when they run the batch process, it's going to be even more. What they do is, they take the JVM out of rotation from the load balancer pool, they take it out, and then they trigger the system dot GC call. Now the system GC is cleared, and, now, and then they put it back inside. So that they are, they are kind of doing this hack, so that you don't incur the pause time. So that is one use case where I have seen it. But other than that, I have never seen a valid, uh, so even people are, dis it can be argued whether this is even a right use case. Rather, you should tune the application, not have that 50, 60 second pause time. Okay. So you, if you pass this disable explicit GC argument to your JVM, irrespective of anywhere, whether it's a third party library or application server or your RMI, it's going to be disabled totally. It's going to be completely disabled. Okay, making sense? Okay, so coming back to our friend's uh, thing, E removed, that's, yeah. Uh, from your application log? No. From your GC log, it is. Yes, yes, correct, yes. See this friend, he removed, he passed this disable explicit GC. Once he did it, he's seeing this kind of remarkable improvement. The throughput went to 19 percentage. The pause time was, which was running anywhere from 12 to 23, 23 seconds, it dropped to 660 milliseconds, the max pause. And here he's seeing an 89 millisecond average pause time. Nothing rocket science, nothing <laughs> major thing he did. Okay, so cloud bees. The Jenkins became better now. <laughs> okay. Now, see also the giving a benefit, it's not always the Cloud Bees. Uh, you run multiple process on Cloud B, on Jenkins. You, so they also trigger a lot of uh, activity. Okay. So now let's coming up. The fourth tip that I want to give is I object creation rate. Today, developers, see, in back in 1970, one byte of memory was one dollar, was one dollar. So by today's standards, say if you're gonna take a photo, photograph, it occupies one MB. That means the cost of a one photograph, the digital photograph that I've taken a phone is one million dollars. <laughs> Taking inflation and everything into account, it's going to be like a $10 million worth. That's how the memory was so precious back then. But now it became so cheap, cheap, cheap. Now we don't even care about memory. No one cares about memory when writing a code. No one even cares. <laughs> Due to that, I'm going to point out some problems with that. We are unnecessarily creating more objects than what it is needed. Developers today, most of the developers, we don't care about writing memory efficient code at all. Unnecessarily objects are created and then they are destroyed. So let me show you an example. Anywhere from 30 to 90 percentage of your memory is wasted because of inefficient programming. So here there is this tool called as heap hero. So if you take your heap dump, a snapshot of your memory, and then you upload it to the tool. I uploaded it. It shows and this is a data which is captured from a very major travel application in North America. They process like uh, 70 percentage of overseas booking, this application. So this application is wasting 52 percentage of its memory because of inefficient programming. So what do I mean by that? Look at this. This application is wasting 18 percentage of memory because of duplication of strings. Let's look at it here. See, this is a travel application. You can see the USD, the currency code, US dollars. There are 47,423 instances of US dollar <laughs> strings created. <laughs> and and uh, uh, this US, the country code, 33,000 instances are created. And the two strings are immutable, that is you cannot change. It is showing. See, today we have tools which can say how much memory your application is using. 
we don't have much tools which can say how much memory your application is wasting so here i'm going to sh uh, keep so this shows you where where all it's being wasted but now let's come down the next major reason why a memory is wasted is because of inefficient collections as a developer we write see here in this application 58 percentage of hash map contains no elements so what's wrong so what do i mean by this a developer of this application you said new hash map and he didn't put any element into it due to that see eight uh, six percentage of memory is wasted like uh, 33 megabyte see when you say new hash map underlyingly you are reserving a space for 16 elements when you say new array list you are reserving a space for uh, array list is basically an array underlyingly you are uh, array is you have to give an uh, capacity size you have to give it uh, array when you say array list you are you are creating array of size of 10 and if i don't put anything there the space for the 10 elements is goes is wasted right so like the so here let me show you this thing okay so this is a typical code as a developer we write users new array list and on to this i add an element a user object right we write this code nothing wrong with this code but say suppose if i'm just adding only one element to this array list say i'm just adding one element to this when i say new array list underlyingly it has an object array i'm reserving a space for 10 elements here i put only one element so then the space that i reserved for the nine elements is wasted now is it making sense okay now let's take an another interesting example now i'm saying an array list i'm going on a loop i'm adding 11 elements to it because we know the size default capacity is 10 i'm adding a 11th element now what do you think it's going to happen so for 10 elements space is created i'm added the object now when i would add the 11th element the array list what happens inside it doubles in size from 10 it becomes 20 so so i had another 10 elements but i'm just dropping one so remaining nine is getting wasted but look at this the problem if i'm trying to add 21 elements from 10 size becomes 20 from 20 it doesn't become 10 more elements from 20 it becomes 40 elements from 40 it becomes 80 80 it becomes it keeps doubling up so the memory whatever i'm allocating is getting wasted so this is one common way how memory is being wasted so that means why i am creating all these objects why am I reserving space and then i'm getting garbage collected rather I, i would i would write a efficient code so my garbage collection pause time is going to get better but see writing a memory efficient code not only helps you with the garbage collection pause time it helps you to bring down your computing cost significantly see there is four computing resource that at the, at the level we operate there are four primary computing resource cpu memory storage and network this, so these are the four primary computing resource cpu memory storage and network if you see there is always an abundant storage and abundant uh, network bandwidth for us so let's talk about the cpu and memory just take one one particular ec2 instance say suppose you're running on a cloud or ec or any particular host take do you saturate cpu first or do you saturate memory first based on the application if you do batch computing and all those things yes but for most applications i have seen i can say significant application memory is the first thing that is getting saturated because just because memory is saturated even though my other three resources cpu i have more cpu on the machine i have more storage more network but still i end up provisioning more and more ec2 instances my cost of computing is going high because of me writing this not putting in this array list not putting a capacity value computing cost goes high if you can write a memory efficient code your overall computing cost is going to come down 
Okay. So, now let me share some quick recommendations just for the collections alone outright little bit just small things the way you code. So, instead of saying new array list if you know initialize with the capacity. So, when you say 3 only the array of 3 elements are going to be created and here instead of doing a early initial see a lot of time we create this array list as a member variable and then when we say add we are doing this rather we can do like this we can do a lazy initialization if it is null uh, only when you are trying to add then you create array uh, otherwise don't create that don't create this array list and and don't clear when you say the clear only the elements are going to be clear but the size of the array that has grown that's not going to be clear that's going to be still be there in the memory rather than that do this null See whatever I am telling now is not a new thing it has been there for always, but we developers we do not bother to care to write. So, even I am saying I do not think it is going to have much impact the way we code, but I am still saying for sake of saying. Oh, okay. okay. So, th we saw only about the inefficient of collection implementation there are 9 such ways how the memory is being wasted. So, these are 9 such ways in which the memory is being wasted and uh, this links walks you through how to go about addressing them. Okay, uh, I have another 4 minutes left. So, the next the tip I would give is the choice of your garbage collection algorithm plays a key role in your past times. I am seeing a very good resp a very good past times and very good throughput with the Z G C millisecond pause times, but the thing is you have to be on Java 11 to use it, but I am seeing very promising feature uh, promising output results with the Z G C. So, in the interest of time that I need to go through I am going to be skipping couple a few more things here. Okay. See, we briefly touched about this in our today morning session for the benefit of the people who did not attend today morning session. The GC logs is going to be helpful in troubleshooting also, not just in tuning, it is going to be helpful in the troubleshooting also. See, this is a reap usage graph of a very healthy instance. You see this kind of the, the, the pause times going, the memory going high, when the full GC ran, the memory reclaims, drops. It go, you see this beautiful sawtooth pattern. See, this is a what is what is your observation on this kind of a pattern? Like I can see it slowly. Yeah. Yes. So this is could be a possible potential memory leak, but we can't confirm that yet because it could be po quite possible. In this area, see, it is not coming down all the way to the bottom, but it could be quite possible that uh, it's not coming. In. Maybe there is a request coming in which is keeping the objects active, or the cache is building. Up. It could be memory leak, or it may not be memory leak. It is too early for us to confirm, but there, but there is a possibility for memory leak also. But this means it is a clear confirmed case that your application is having a memory problem. You can see here the GCs are running repeatedly, but the memory is not coming down. And in fact, you can see you can notice that the reclaimed bytes during this time frame, like earlier it was reclaiming like 800 megabyte, 800 megabyte for every GC cycle but gradually it is not reclaiming. So, uh, let me briefly touch upon micro metrics. See there are some micro metrics that is available in this link that I have published take a look at it. With this micro metrics you would be able to forecast or you will be able to predict that your application go is going to have a memory problem. So, what do I mean by that is here look at this example. This, this application started to see this repeated full GCs running, and rep but the out of memory error happens only here. Right here if you see around 8 o'clock this repeated full GCs are happening, but only like a 30, 40 minutes later your application is going to experience out of memory error. If I am going to look at one of the micro metric that we say is the GC throughput. Here if you see the GC throughput all these here it would be like a 90 percentage. 99 percentage 98 percentage, 
But as it goes higher, here the application is only doing the garbage collection. It's not reclaiming any memory. Due to that, a GC throughput is going to go down. From 99 percentage, it's going to drop to 95, 90, 85, 80, and it's going to. So if you see the GC throughput to be dropping, then you can say that, OK, this application is going to have a problem. So right around here, instead of waiting for 30, 40 minutes, we can take the JVM out of rotation. I will answer. Uh, so take it out of rotation so that you will minimize the impact, the customer impact. Because right around this time, the application is only doing garbage collection. It's not doing any other customer activity. When you see this repeated full GC running, it pauses all the threads, and only the garbage collection is running. OK. OK. So what is garbage? In my opinion, everything is a garbage. <laughs> because see, if this water, if this glass fails, then this becomes a garbage. <coughs> if I use this uh, book completely, then this becomes a garbage. The speaker, after I die, I also become garbage. Right? I'm not going to be useful. <laughs> so people who are all laughing, you are also at one point in time going to become garbage also. <laughs> so in my opinion, everything is garbage at the end of the day. So with this, I will wrap up my talk. Uh, the slides are going to be available here in this blog.gcc.io. And I'm here to take any questions after. So thank you very much for attending the session.